Hello guys and welcome to today's class. For today's class, we'll be looking at the 2022 slash 2023 physics practical 2, which is physics 104 graph question and solution. Now the question here says to determine the refractive index of a glass prism in the laboratory, you obtain the following data. So you have this um, table here. So you have um, theta, cos theta, nz, rz, and then x this. The A part says complete the table and plot a graph of cos theta against x. The B part says find the slope of the graph and comment on the parameter that the slope represents. The C part says find the intercept on the x axis. Alright, let's get this done. So I'll come to this. The A part says complete the table and plot a graph of cos theta against x. Your first task here is to recreate the table as I've done here. Now let's plot a... Okay, so the same should complete the table. To complete this table, simply fill in these missing columns. So you fill in the columns for cos theta and then also for x. Let's start with cos theta. First of all, theta is 70. So if theta is 70, let's get the value of cos theta. That's cosine of theta. Of course, we have to use a calculator. So I'll get my calculator here. So my first angle is 70. I'll get cos 70. So I'll get my calculator here. All right, so I'll just get cos 70. And that's equal to, that's about 0 0.34 in two decimal places. All right, so I have 0 0.34 as my answer. So that means here should be 0 0.34. Also get for other ones here. So I also punch cost 60. So if I punch cost 60, my value is equal to half. That's about 0 0.5. But putting this in two decimal places becomes 0 0.50. So I have 0 0.50. So you can just proceed to fill up the, the other ones there. So guess cost 40, which I've done already. Cost 40 is about 0 0.77. You can confirm this answer too. Also get cost 30. Cos 30 is about 0 0.87. Finally, get cos 20. Cos 20 is about 0 0.94. Alright, so I'm done filling this table here. My next task is to come to X here and fill up this section. Okay, so how do I fill up this section here? This part say X should be equal to the value of NZ my, all over RZ. So divide um this column here by each of this so for the first one i'm having 2.6 divided by 5.3 also get my calculator there 2.6 so i'll come here that becomes 2.6 divided by 5.3 and if i do this i have this so in this my half 0 0.49 as my answer, so it becomes 0 0.49, so 0 0.49. For the next one, I will now have 2, that's 2.0, divided by 5. So also from here, I'm having 2 divided by 5. So it becomes this, I'm having 2 divided by 5. And that's equal to, I have 0 0.40 in two decimal places. So it becomes... So that would be 0 0.40. Come to the next one there. Next one now becomes 1.5 divided by 4.8. In which if I do 1.5 divided by 4.8, I have about 0 0.31. So to the next one there, I have 1.1 divided by 4.7. 1.1 divided by 4.7, I have about 0 0.23. Yep. So my final thing that becomes this one here, 0 0.90 divided by 4.6. So if I do 0 0.90 divided by 4.6, I'll get 0 0.20. Alright, so I'm done completing my table. As you can see, I presented each of my answers in two decimal places. So with this, I've achieved the first tax, which is complete the table. The minus tax is to plot a graph of cos theta against x. Now, for a graph of cos theta against x, 
cos theta would be on the y axis, which is your vertical axis. And of course, x will now be on the x axis, which is your horizontal axis. So I'll head over to my graph sheet and then plot this. So cos theta against x. All right, so let's go to our graph sheets there. So, so if I if I go to my graph sheet here, so I'm having this. So you can see I've already um, scaled this. Um, I've labeled the axis. So here's my cos theta axis and here's my axis, my x axis. And you can see my scale. Of course, um, every graph must have a tights and a scale. So go back and put the title of my graph and the scale of my graph. Okay, so for my title and my scale, let's look at the title of my graph. So title, the title of my graph becomes, now to get your title, it's as easy as going back to what you asked to plot. So I was asked to plot this one here, which is a graph of cos theta against x. So that's my title. So I would come here and I'll simply paste this here. All right, so that's my title. Title is a, a graph of cos theta against x. So that's how to get your title. It's as easy as that. So just the heading of what you ask to plot. That's my title. Let's get scale. Let's get scale used. So what's my scale? Scale used. Let's get scale used. Um, scale used. Again, I'll go back to my graph sheet. If I go to my graph sheet here, from here to here, we said it's called a unit. So let one unit represent from all of this. I can see this as 0 0.05. So if I come to this 0 0.05, observe that I'm having x. X has no SI unit. Because if I come to my graph for x, I'm dividing nz, which is in centimeters, by rz, which is also in centimeters. So it becomes centimeters at the numerator divided by centimeters at the denominator. They both cancel out. So there's no SI unit. So hence, I'll now have here to here, one unit representing 0 0.05 on the x-axis. So let's one unit, let's one unit represent 0 0.05 on the x-axis. And again, go back to my graph sheets. For my graph sheet here, from this point to this point is also one unit. That's from the origin to this point is one unit. One unit represents 0 0.2. Of course, 0 0.2 cos theta, what's your, what's your unit? If I go back to this, observe that theta was in degrees. So cos theta should also be in degrees, right? They use DEG as degrees. So I can come and say, let's from here to here, let one unit represent 0 0.2 degrees. On the cos theta axis all right so and let one unit represent represents um that was 0 0.2 i think let me confirm that yep 0 0.2 represents 0 0.2 degree on d okay so you can choose to use the degree symbol if that suits you better, right? You can choose to use the degree symbol if it suits you better. But I'm using this because that's what's here. But still, if you want to use the normal degree symbol, which is your small knot, right? That your small O at the top, you're free to use that. 0 0.2 degrees on the cos theta axis. I'll just get this here. On the cos theta. On the cos theta axis. All right, so I've successfully um, done my title and scale used. All right, so I've imputed my title, I've imputed my scale used. With this now, I can now go on to plus my graph. So going back to my graph sheet here. All right, so I've imputed my title and my, my scale. Let me now plot the graph. So my, I'll just have to impute these values, impute these values back into um, this my graph sheet and get my points. So if I'm plotting this, so at cos theta equal to 0 0.34, my x is 0 0.49. All right, so I'll just come here. I think I've done that already. 
all right so this is this so when x is 0 point remember x represents the x axis all right when x is 0 0.49 cos theta which is the y axis is 0 0.34 so you can see here okay when x is 0 0.4 cos theta is 0 0.5 as you can also see here, when x is 0 0.4, cos theta is already 0 0.5. So I've imputed all of these values. I'll just go ahead and OK it. So if I OK this now, you can now see my value here. All right, so you can now see this. But again, this is not a perfect straight line graph. So what do I do? I'll now take the line of best fit. All right, so take your line of best fit, which is this. Um, OK it. So you can now see my line of best fit. Let me take off these points here so that I can have a better view. All right, so this is now my graph, as you can see, and this is my line of best fits. So I now have this. With this, I have plotted the graph, right? I've plotted my graph, and this is what the graph looks like. So I'm done plotting my graph. So you can plot your own graph. Please, for your own graph, let me say something here, please. For your own graph, use a tight tool and a scale that is convenient for you. For this, now I'm using a system, so that's why it's easier for me. So if this um, scale does not suit your graph sheet, you can choose another scale. That suits your graph sheets at the end we should still have the same answer or at least approximately the same answer all right okay what's the next tax here so complete the table which we've done and plot a graph of cos theta against x which we've now done b says find the slope of the graph all right let's find the slope of the graph so b let's get slope slope of graph or slope is equal to all right so let's get slope how do you get slope um Go back to my graph sheet here. So now usually slope should be um, a point because a point where this line intersects exactly the x and y intercept, which is somehow difficult to find here for this. But this this should uh, most likely be a point for the slope, but this point is not very um, exact. Like this is not intersecting the x and y points directly. So for a case like this, how do you find slope? Now, first things first, the good thing here is that, um, as you can see, let me bring this down. All right, so this software calculates slope for you and tells you your answer. So from here, my slope is about minus 2.1 as my slope. That's what I have my, as my slope, minus 2.1. But then, I'll keep this aside. Let me get this slope here. So for a case like this where, for a case like this where this does not cause the x and y, y axis directly, what do you do? Well, you can choose any point on this line and call it your slope. That's the correct. Now, what do I mean? Choose any point here and get your slope. The reason why we always say look for the point where this line cause the X and Y axis directly is because it's easier to pick out the coordinates of that uh, very point. But for a case like this, where this one does not cause the X and Y axis directly, what do I do? So I'll just choose any point here. Um, so what I'll do is this. I'll choose a point here. Mm, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me. I'm trying to zoom in so you see clearly. So let me come here. So I'll pick it. Let me call this my first point here. This point here, as you can see, uh, the software gives you the coordinates. So from my software, you can see the coordinates by the right um, lower bottom of the screen. So let me show you where it is. So look at look at this point. Here my mouse is here. So here, look at this. So you can see the x and y. So you can see x equal to here is x is equal to 0 0.74 and 0 0.7437 y is equal to 0 0.093 so this gives you the coordinates so i'll just come here if i let's say i'm picking um here this exact point let me zoom in to be sure i'm correct so i'm picking this exact point here this exact point here so you can see look at the bottom right the bottom right of my my screen that point it's about x as x is equal to from there x is equal to 0 0.10 0 point 0 0.10 and y is about 1.145 okay so y is about one y is about 1.145 so that's this point. So I've got my first point. But before I proceed, let me go back to put my um, formula for slope. For slope, let's get my formula. All right, so slope is equal to change in, uh, not change in y now, 
the y axis is actually cos theta. So I'll say change in cos theta, which is now the y axis. So it becomes slope is equal to change in cos theta all over change in x. So I'll insert this. All right, so that becomes change in cos theta all over change in x. And that's equal to, that becomes cos theta 2 minus cos theta 1. Okay, so that becomes, that should give you cos theta 2, cos theta subscript 2 minus, minus cos theta 1. All right. All over x2, x subscript 2 minus x subscript 1. So I have this. So this is uh, what I have. So I now have this one here. And this is now also equal to, so let's pick out values from our graph sheets. From our graph sheets there, From a graph sheet there, remember that the first point we had initially was um, x equal to we had x equal to 1.11 and y, which was which was the cos theta axis as 1.15. So I'm taking um, cos theta two, so it means that cos theta two is equal to. I can choose any point on this line. And still take as my point it still gives me my same answer don't forget that my slope has already been given to me as minus 2.1 but i'm trying to confirm that so what do i do pick any point here let me zoom in so i'll have a clearer view pick any point here if i choose a point here the value of the point will be given that the, the value of the point where my where my mouse is or what my pointer is will be given by the top by the bottom right hand side so if you look at the bottom right hand side of the screen you can see that where I am now, let me focus on this here. Where I am now is at x equal to 0 0.0655 and y equal to 1.233. That's the exact point I am now. If you look at the bottom right of the screen, uh, let me move that to show you this. So look at look at this point here. Look at this, look at this point here. So you can see it gives you the x and y. Look at this point here. It gives you the x and y values of your, of your graph. So you can see this point here where my mouse is. Right. Okay, so back to this. Let me choose this point here. So this point, what I'm uh, let me let me be very precise so that I'll have a answer. Alright, so this point here, what I'm seeing here is about 0 0.0467 and y as 1.272. So I'll try to see if I can plot that point there. Right. So this is exactly on the point. So this was what I needed. You can still come again somewhere around here and pick another point. So here, let's see what you have here. Here, if I also look at the what's it called, the bottom right hand side of my screen here, here's about here for the x-axis. If you look at the x-axis here at the bottom right, the x-axis here is about 0 0.204, while the y-axis is about 0 0.759. All right. Yep, perfect. So you can see now that, that I now have two points on my um, line. So with these two points, now I can find their intersection and then get my slope. That's how you do it, all right? Find their intersection and then get the slope. All right, so I'm here now. So all I have to do is just look for it to get my slope, which is simply choose two points. I, I said choose two points on the straight line, all right? So draw this draw this point here draw this to um, the left hand side to reach the vertical axis also trace this point to reach the here trace this downwards to reach this point also trace this downward to reach this point so this is how i get my slope in a case like this okay so what next i'll pick up i'll pick out the value of cos theta 2 cos theta 1 x2 and then x1 so if i trace this this way here this gives you the value of cos theta 2. So I'm going to use two decimal places and trace this this way. If I trace this, this gave me about... This gave me about cos theta 2 was about... I'm going to use two decimal places. That was 
27 minus let me get cos theta 1 back to my graph sheet cos theta 1 is simply from here I will trace this this point this way here from, from this point where this one here this line and this one intersects that's here from this point trace this to my left hand side when I trace that I had about 0 0.76 um, approximately so it becomes minus 0 0.76 so that's cos theta 2. Let's now get x2 and x1. So how do you get x2? Back to my graph sheet. x2 is simply distance from here, this point here. Trace this downward. That should give you x2. From this point here, trace this downward till you get to your x-axis. And from my initial value there, the value of x2 was about 0 0.29 in two decimal places. 0 0.29 minus Let's now get x1. So x1 is simply is simply the value from this point here downwards. So when we did this, x1 we trace downward. So x1 so x2 is about 0 0.05 approximately. So that's the value 0 0.05 from our from what we got initially. That's if we trace it downwards. Let's now get the value of x2, or uh, that's x2. Let's now get the value of x1. For x1, we'll trace this downward to this way here. If I trace this downward here, uh, what we got initially was about 0 0.29. So I had minus 0 0.29. All right. So that's inside this. So I have this. So this is now equal to All right, so before we proceed, let me go back and show you what I mean So back to this I said the value of cos theta 2 is from here from this point trace to your left hand side That gives you cos theta 2 Also from this point here this point trace this to your left hand side that gives you cos theta 1 From this point here trace this downwards that gives you the value of x2 to your x-axis from here Trace this downwards to your x axis that gives you x1. So here's the value for x1, here's the value for x2, here's the value for cos theta 1, here's the value for cos theta 2. All right, so now back to my graph sheet. So I have this. My next task will now be impute these values in a calculator. So I'll punch these values and see what I get. All right, so let me impute, let me use, bring back my calculator. If I bring back a calculator, I'm having this. So, so it becomes 1.27, 1.27 minus 0 0.76 divided by 0 0.05 minus 0 0.29. So I have this. All right, so equal to, so I'm having this. That's about minus 2.1, which is exactly what my graph told me. If you look at what I showed you earlier, but we had my graph as minus 2.1. Yep. So, yeah, so that's my slope. So, which means the graph was correct. So, that's equal to minus 2.1. That's in two decimal places. So, in two decimal places, I have minus 2.1 as my slope. So, this is how I calculate my slope. All right, so we've gotten a value for a slope. What next? Come down again. What's the next question there? The next question there says, comment on the parameter that the slope represents. Comment on the parameter that the slope um, represents. Now, let me say something clearly. If you look for other questions of this nature online, you observe something. Let me show you from my graph sheet. If you look for other questions of this nature online, you observe something. And what would you observe? You observe that if you look for other questions online, you observe this. You observe a graph that looks like this instead. So you have a graph of this nature that slants this way and gives you a positive slope. So you can check this up online. Look for other questions of this nature. You have something like this that slants this way and gives you positive. 
But for this particular question, it's entirely different. All right, it gives you a negative graph. This kind of line should give you a positive graph. And if you check on lines, as I said, you will see uh, many questions like this, but you'll be having a positive graph. Please note, note that this particular example I'm solving, this one I'm solving now, this one I'm solving here now, is different from others. Yes, it has the same table and the same probably arrangements, but the values are different. For this graph, it's peculiar because you have a negative slope instead of the normal positive. All right. So that's one thing you should note, just in case you're checking this up with other examples online. All right. So having said that, let's proceed to our work there. Um, back to the work here. So the question here says, uh, what does the slope or what parameter does the slope represent? Now, normally the slope should represent what is called the refractive index of glass. All right. Of course, the experiment here was, if you look at this, it said to determine the refractive index of a glass prism. So that's what the slope should be. So we know very well that the slope of a graph or the refractive index of a glass is about 1.5. So my answer should be about 1.5 or something close to 1.5. But then I'm now having minus 2.1, which is not even what, what, what I should be having. So what does this mean? Number one, it means that I have a negative graph. And this would mean that my, for this case here, it means that the refractive index is minus 2.1. All right. So the refract, what the slope represents is the refractive index of the glass which we know should be 1.5 or something around 1.5, but I'm not having minus 2.1. So what does it entail? It entails that in this work, there was an error. Like not in the solving here, but in this table, there was an error. Like this table has an error. So that's what they said. That's what they said. You obtain the following data. So this data from this now was wrong. So it's a question given intentionally. All right. So it means you made an exp uh, you made you made an error while doing the experiment. That's what it means. Okay, you made an error while doing the experiment. That's what this means. Okay, but that's okay. So what what you comment here is simply you say, um, so you now say the slope, the slope represents the refractive index. of the glass prism all right so this is what this slope represents but i'll go down further if i were you to give it to give a disclaimer because i know i know fully well that this the refractive index of a glass should be about 1.5 but i'm not having minus 2.1 so what do i see now let me say something here now um here's what something you should note if the graph is a negative graph which is what we have here, and has a slope of minus 2.1. This means that the refractive index of the glass prism is negative. However, in reality, the refractive index cannot be negative. All right. A negative slope in this case, as we have here, might indicate that a calculation error or an experimental error has occurred. For here, there is no calculation error. So it's obviously from the experiment. So that means um, um, there's an experimental error in this. All right. So when you, that means they they uh, they purposely give you wrong values. All right. Assuming that you made a mistake. So you have to figure out that from this thing here, there's a mistake somewhere. All right. So there's an experimental error here. If if everything was correct, all right, what you be what you should be having is about one point five or something close to one point five. All right, so yes, it represents the refractive index of glass prism, but then it's wrong because there's an error in this experiment. All right, so that's what you should note. All right, so having said that, the next one says find the intercept on the x axis. What's the intercept on the x axis? Let's take C. So C would be intercept. All right, so for the C part, intercept. on the x axis so that's equal to so to get this value just simply go back to our graph sheet um so go back to our graph here so the interest on the x axis is uh this point here so this point here that means an arrow here so this point here where x is zero and i have this from my from my software here it tells me that the intercept on the on the 
x-axis that's somewhere around here so if i look at this uh, let me try to zoom in and see if i can get this intercept i'm trying to zoom in so i can get my intercept so i'll move this a bit so what's this value zoom in zoom in zoom in zoom in so somewhere around here okay so hopefully i can use my coordinates so i'm having somewhere around here so here's about 0 0.65 so you can see look at the bottom right you can see, you can see that x equal to 0 0.65 and y equal to 0 0.0000 and what's what is what you have there so that means the intercept on the x-axis is 0 0.65 so i'll come here my intercept on the x-axis is 0 0.65 Six five. That's simply where the graph sheet here cuts the x-axis. That's this. So I got mine as zero point six five. So you can check your graph and confirm what you get there. All right. So I think uh, this is about the graph of this. All right. So this is how we solve this question. So here's my graph sheet again, and these are my answers. All right. So this is how we solve this question. I think that's all about this question. All right, so this is the solution to that question there. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. That means like this video, leave a comment on your thoughts about this solution, and also share this video to your friends so that we can be making more contents like this. All right, so this is the answer to this question. Uh, let's take a peep at our graph sheet again. Yep, so this is our graph to give you a negative slope as we said earlier. All right, so this is how we do this. Thank you very much for staying to the end and see you in our next graph tutorial class.